BPAWA meteorologist Bobby Martrich with your outlook for the weekend, December 3rd and 4th, 2022. The weekend video forecast is proudly sponsored by Bozergeist Brewing Company. They are located at 1250 Simon Boulevard in Easton, very close to Lafayette College. They are purveyors of fine craft beer in the Lehigh Valley region with a vast beer selection from IPAs to ales to stouts and sours. They also have a fantastic menu selection, live entertainment, open mic nights and trivia nights and are open five days a week between Wednesday and Sunday. They will also be set up in the Eastern, Eastern Winter Village, downtown in the Circle. Be sure to stop by their hut for one of their locally made craft beers now through December 18th, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They are Bozergeist Brewing Company in Easton, proud sponsors of the weekend video forecast. So, weekend's going to start off wet, but it's not going to be an entirely wet day here on Saturday. We have some showers working through this morning, then there's going to be a little bit of a break, and then just an isolated shower uh, during the course of the afternoon and maybe early evening if uh, down by the coast. But uh, the isolated chance is going to be with the front as it moves through. So this is all ahead of it we're getting this morning. And then you have to have an isolated remaining chance uh, the remainder of the day. The better chance to look at this is going to be uh, to go to the NAM High res Future Simulator Radar. I'm going to start this off right here in the morning because we had a little bit of uh, activity that moved through overnight. But we're going to start this off at 6 o'clock in the morning just so you can see where all those showers are across central PA. This is about a three to four hour window from start to finish. So when do you start raining? It's about three to four hours from there before it shuts off. So this is going to continue off to the east. Here's 7 a.m. Here's 8. Here is 9. Here is 10. There's 11. Just about to the Delaware River here at this point and just and inundating New Jersey. But then once we get to around noon, the interior dries out. You get a break in between. Might even see some peaks of sun in between there, between batches. Uh, but the cold front itself is going to be back here. And you can see where that is right here. It's pretty simple. And out ahead of that, you have a few uh, isolated showers as this continues off to the east. And uh, they will start to diminish in intensity if they as they move eastward and just kind of fizzle a little bit. So you could get an isolated or stray shower out of this. Generally mid to late afternoon uh, in our far eastern parts of the state. Uh, early to mid-afternoon in central PA and late afternoon to early evening across parts of New Jersey. Again, not everywhere is going to get that. It's just going to be with the front as it moves through and it'll be more isolated in nature. And then after that, we turn mostly clear overnight and it turns much colder. So we're going to be mild today ahead of that boundary. 50 to 59 is the spread in temperatures. It's a pretty big spread because the northwestern areas are going to get into that frontal passage quicker, not allowing for a, a warm up in between. Whereas uh, down by the Philadelphia region, South Jersey, uh, places like that will have uh, the opportunity to get to the upper 50s, maybe even touch 60 in a few spots. Then we get past this. Well, before we get to that, I want to show you what the, it's also going to turn breezy today. So there's going to be, this is an accumulated wind gust, max wind gust. So this is the highest wind gust you'll see for the entire event today. Uh, it's going to pick up this morning and then continue throughout the day and then uh, stays breezy through the evening. I would say this is more breezy than windy, but it's going to be 15 to 25 uh, will be the common gusts across the region with some peaks that get to 30 to 35. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody goes slightly over 35, but most areas should be under 35 for peak gusts. And this is for the entire event, okay? There's no surge expected today with any of the uh, wind coming in. This is just a, it's going to start off as a warm southerly wind. As soon as the front passes, it shifts to the west and west-northwest, and it'll be cold air advection related because we are going to turn colder on Sunday, as you can see. Above me, 38 to 45 is the spread in temperatures, although we are expecting mostly sunny skies here on Sunday. So this has kind of been like an every three-day pattern. It's been like this three days ago, and then it was then we had a slight step higher, and then we got a warm-up with rain, and then we go right back to what we were doing originally. So we have a day. Uh, today's uh, on Sunday is going to be cold again, and then we're, the trough's going to start to begin to lift out a little bit here on Sunday. So slightly warmer on Sunday, but uh, by about four degrees or so. It's not going to be a whole lot. Uh, also mostly sunny on Monday, okay? Um, or excuse me, did I say that wrong? So the trough is going to lift out on Monday, or start to lift out on Monday. Sunday is going to be the cold day, uh, as you can see above me, and then Monday it's going to lift out, and then uh, we'll have temperatures increasing by about 4 or 5 degrees from what we saw on Sunday. And then the next system is going to come in here on uh, Monday night and Tuesday. So this is a, another frontal boundary, and uh, we have a chance for a few showers very late at night, Monday night. I'm not expecting a wintry component with this right now, uh, but we'll continue to watch it over the weekend. And, uh, of course, early next week. And then we have some scattered showers that are going to rotate through here uh, during the day on Tuesday. And then that wraps up. Then we have just some residual 
isolated showers still hanging around here during the course of Wednesday. Not a lot, just a little bit. And this is still in the form of rain at this point because the front has not completely moved through. It gets hung up a little bit because you have high pressure off to the southeast, uh, off the southeastern coast. So that's sitting right here. So it's kind of increasing these heights a little bit and pushing against that uh, cold air trying to come in. So we have uh, the boundary still all the way up here. So we, because of that, uh, this will still be rain at this point here on Wednesday if there is anything. And then after that, we do expect the, the heights to lower, as you can see here. And we have another system that's going to be in the vicinity next week. And I'm going to change this to a precipitation type map on purpose. Just as you can see, on the northern side of this, uh, there is a wintry component to it. It's some snow. The question is, how far north does this get? Uh, and the European model continues to show this sliding to the south, which is very possible depending on how strong high pressure is above this system and how much cold air advection works down to force this boundary where it's riding. The boundary is kind of like right here. It's a, called a baroclinic boundary, which is a separating the temperature difference between cold and warm. And wherever this boundary sets up, if it's a little bit further to the north, then we're going to get more snow up here instead. And there's GFS was showing some solutions that had this kind of cutting up like this, and it was just rain everywhere. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of different solutions on the table for the end of the week. In our local forecast, we list rain or snow showers because there's a lot of uncertainty with this. I will tell you that if you are an avid model watcher and model follower, uh, don't take anything you're seeing once you get past like four or five days uh, with any, you got to take that with a grain of salt because they're going to be bouncing around. These runs, the run to run changes, but from model to model and run to run within each model are drastic. And that's because it's having a hard time resolving this pattern with that block uh, that I talked about in the long range outlook yesterday. Uh, so we're going to try to make sense of this. Hopefully by Sunday, the weather weekly video on Sunday, I'm going to, I'm going to show uh, what we're seeing and why we're seeing it. And we're trying to stay consistent with what's been going on uh, for a while now uh, on the ensemble guidance. And so whenever you have these in-between runs that decide to go warmer or show a cutter storm or anything like that, it uh, doesn't really mu make much sense, especially when the very next run is going back to the original idea. So uh, we're going to show you what we're looking at that can produce some snow. It is a, There is a possibility that we get into a couple snow events once we get uh, further into December. Uh, and actually not that far. This might be one of them. The next one might be falling around right around the 11th or 12th. And there might be another storm signal right behind that in the 14th to 18th time frame that we identified yesterday's long range outlook. So there's going to be a lot of potentials. Will all of them hit? Probably not. Uh, is it possible none of them hits? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're going to show uh, show what that is and uh, why we think we might get at least something out of that on a wintry side that can give us some snow on the ground perhaps before Christmas. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for the weekend, December 3rd and 4th, 2022. Have a great Saturday and Sunday.